Hello and welcome to a midweek Wardy's Waffle. Uh, I'm just having a drive around the lanes at the minute and you'll see this uh, in this clip in, in a few minutes time looking at some of the crops and the drains running, the, uh, running really well after all the work that, uh, that Barry did doing the dikes out um, a few weeks ago. So in this update, we've got uh, looking at the drains and the water, we're putting the, the windows uh, in the house, which is a bit of a job because it was really, really windy yesterday, about 40 miles an hour wind. So that was a bit tricky. Um, and uh, we're lifting sugar beet today so we'll have a quick look at the at the sugar beet because we've got this is our last part of the of the last field and the factory closes on on saturday so we need this in i wouldn't really be lifting um, at the minute because it is a little bit on the wet side with all the rain we've had but it is on light land so it's fairly forgiving but we'll have a look at that bit of a shortened update this week but uh, thanks very much for watching hope you enjoy it and if you make it to the end we'll see you then we're just putting this uh, main window in the back of the house but it's exceptionally windy here today and i can't find my microphone with the muffle on so i'm just doing it from here i'll go outside in a minute and see and show you but you will see that we won't be able to hear anything because of the wind so i'll just go out through this door here well i will if i can get it out there we go So we put a tractor here to try and shelter the wind because it's about 40 miles an hour at the minute. The, uh, the sheep are sheltering behind there, but they're not near. Oh, it's all fixed. Well, so it's just got to take a little bit off the uh, frame of the wind. It's Tuesday morning, we've had more rain. We are lifting the last of the sugar beet today, which uh, really I didn't want to do because the conditions aren't really very good because of all the rain we've had. In the last seven days, up on the light land, um, where the sugar beet is, we've had just under um, 25 millimetres, which is about an inch of rain. But down here at the main farm, uh, at uh, just on the side of the A17 on the heavier soils, we've had 35 millimetres. So we've had a lot of rain in the last week. and. Um, yeah, whether I'm, whether we should have got some planting drilling done, I'm not sure, but I think probably with it so wet at the minute, the seed's probably better in the bag um, than uh, than out in the field in the soil. But anyway, um, I'll just turn the camera around. I've just spotted down here, driving along the lane here, uh, in the field that Ollie came in uh, last week. And this is the field of um, sugar beet that we, or the was sugar beet were lifted. I've just spotted quite a bit of water here. So it just shows how wet this edge of this field is. It's not the whole field. It's just the edge of the field where the sugar beet harvester uh, um, travelled and the trailers travelled along uh, and they went to the beet heap just in front of us. So that's the beet heap in front of us or the concrete pad. It's got tarmac planings on it um, at the minute. You saw us two weeks ago put them through uh, fine turf screen. You can see just see here by the water on the lanes. I'll just get my window down. This is the field that we had sugar beet in and we've dragged it two or three times. Um, and actually for, for new followers, I'll just put a clip of that drag working. This is it uh, on the frost. We can just see now down here, the water. Just see there, it's wet in there. And the reason it's wet is because it was really compacted badly by the sugar beet harvester and the trailers all come into this uh, concrete beet pad uh, in front of us to store it. Um, yeah, um, one or two people have said, why don't we plough? We haven't ploughed since 2004 on this farm and uh, we just get a lot better soil conditions, a lot better results and it's cheaper as well because we didn't find you could plough heavy soil properly. You used to sit it up and this is just a clip of some of the, of one third when we did use to plough and this is what it used to leave it like. So that's why we don't plough anymore. And we use the Solo instead when we can, which is this machine just there. That's the Simba Solo that we use uh, in, in uh, quite a lot of situations. Regular viewers will know we always have really good farm roads, but this isn't so good. This one from this beet heap that you've just seen is concrete beet pad just see this is the uh, result of lorries taking sugar beet out these tracks in the frost in December when it was wet as well and 
this is the problem. This is why when uh, you have sugar beet, why well, we need 40 pounds a ton, because you've got things like this that other crops wouldn't damage. You don't get this sort of damage to the tracks from wheat and barley and normal cereals that are harvested in the summer. And it's just one of the things that we have with sugar beet. It's infrastructure damage. You can just see here how bad these are. That's why we've got these tarmac planings to put on them uh, this next summer. Just having a walk around one or two of the dikes after the rain we've just had the last night or so. That we buried it out a few weeks ago. Drain's running really well. Through here. Another big pipe coming out here. That's Nala put a pheasant up with the look of it. Nala! Another pipe there running. Yeah, coming out this uh, this field here. That's running really well, that dike is now. All the way in the distance. Wheat's looking well as well, which I'm pleased about. This is after beans. No water stood anywhere after the 35 millimetres of rain we've just had in the last few days. Yep, there we go. Come on. Frankie's always trying to play catch up. Their legs aren't as long as Nala's. Just driving past one of the fields that we planted wheat in uh, November, about the 15th of November in that last dry spell. But you've uh, seen from my other clips, the headlands and the edges of the fields aren't very good. You can see water stood there. And when you're looking up the headland here at the edge of the field. Not quite sure why it's as poor as this, because it actually did go in really well and it was dry. There was actually dust blowing, but when you look there again up there, not brilliant. And the same here. Those there are Agri's trial plots. They were planted left to right as you're looking in the screen, so a crossway on. And these are all the different plots. You can see there's a gap down there, but we'll focus on those a bit uh, in a few weeks' time in the spring when they start to get growing. And then this is the dike that we, uh, that Barry hasn't done, so it's a huge job. You see there the amount of water flowing down there. I'll just get out and just show you. So there's a good drain coming coming out there, six inch pipe out there. But the trouble with this, this is the beck and it brings water from Leadenham Village and the A17. All that lot there has got to come off. It's all growing down the bank and uh, all through up here it all winds so we're going to get an excavator with a flail head on and really sort this out because there's trees growing out the bottom of the uh, of the bank and the same across here there's a pipe there running well you see that pipe's about a meter diameter yeah, we're going to fetch all these all these here on the edge and the bank and really sort it out next year. So it's going to be a big job, this. And it goes, this dike goes all the way right down to the trees in the distance. And then in contrast, this is a field that was planted around the middle of October. One of the first ones um, we did. And this is uh, wheat. This is gleam, a variety called gleam after spring beans. You can just see the difference between the two planted in really good conditions and uh, about a month earlier so yeah i'm really pleased that with this looks looks really well um there is the agri uh, weather station we've got here for them there's a whole network of them across the country and then we've also got the send crop uh, weather station as well um at one of the other farms so yeah but right, pleased with this week looking really well I've just come to book my discovery in for a service at Marshall Land Rover on the edge of Lincoln. So I thought I'll just have a look at vehicles and see what they've got here, second-hand ones. My discovery is six years old, uh, more or less to the day. So I'm just wondering whether I keep it or, or move it on. Anyway, just have a look around some of these vehicles. But it's staggering. When you look at the showrooms all these Land Rover dealerships have, I know they have a certain um, specification that Land Rovers say they have to build them to. 
and uh, I think the last one um, from memory uh, was uh, the one um, I think Douglas had was around 10 million pounds it cost to, to put these Jaguar Land Rover dealerships up which is just horrendous it's even down to the thing as toilet door handles have to be the same ones in all the depots uh, Land Rover control everything uh, like that it's, uh, it's ridiculous really this is incredible when you start to look at the price of some of these vehicles it's um, March you can just see there 20 so it's three years old this vehicle it's an evoke it's done 42,000 miles and the one just under 40,000 for it incredible so we'll just go inside and have a look so you've got Land Rover on one side and you've got Jaguar on the other Yeah, you can just see why these showrooms cost the money. Ridiculous amount. This is the uh, Defenders. Try to think what the price of this will be. Oh, only 93,000. What an awful colour. Go across to the Jaguar side. The E-Pace, this is the smaller brother or sister to the F-Pace. F-Type, lovely cars. But not a lot of good going across the field. Anyway, that's it. I'll head off home now. I'm just going to take the bucket up to uh, up to the heath. This is for the Manitou, ready for uh, loading lorries. We've got the beat lifted uh, today, which I was just going to go up and... Uh, see it and get some footage of lifting and they've finished it they've done about 27 acres in six hours so you'll not see that but i'm just going to go up there they are cleaning the harvester down and i'm just going to go and see what a mess it is because uh, with the rain we've had the last few days around the concrete it won't be brilliant so yeah just going to take this bucket up for tom because uh, we're loading the lorries um tomorrow so the parked up now just having the lunch but got it all lifted here this feels 54 acres they've done 27 acres i think this morning but it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be on these headlands actually it's it's quite dry which is which is good despite the rain but that just shows this soil type you can just see just starting to dry there that's a bit lighter there but you can just see how forgiving it is and that, a lot of stone in here with only um about eight inches of soil before you get down to pure limestone on here and that's the heap there Cleaner in place, ready for the lorries coming. Yeah, I'm surprised how dry this is really for the rain we've had. We can just see how easy and how easy working the soil is. Here's the beet tops, not much of them at the minute now because the frost took a lot of them away. We'll just have a quick look at the harvest and just look around it. So, this is the topper. See these fly around at a huge pace. And these flails fly around and they top the beat. And you've got the knife here, scalper that scalps. You've got one for every row. You can see there, there's six of them on here because it lifts six rows at a time. So that takes the crown of the beat off. And you've got feeler wheels here in a vibrating chair. You can see the beat comes up through there and as it comes up it pinches it and squeezes it out the ground as it gets narrower to the back here and this is rotating augers these are all rotating carry the beat into the middle there this is going around as well to help the beat to the middle and it goes under the cab on that belt there 
that's obviously going around onto this turbine that's spinning that way to that one that, that is spinning that way onto this one that then spins this way drops it into this web and all this is coming down here running down running round running round like that underneath so the beat drops into that up that far side and then up into the tank running up there drops in the tank and that's the unloading elevator we'll just have a look in the top of the tank as well so you can see here that's where it's coming round here gates here they allow the stones in the soil and the tops to, to come out see it better this side a lot of hydraulic pipes and hydraulics and electrics and that's the tops if you spin the tops out the side that's it and that's inside the tank obviously that folds them down a little bit as well but that walker moves up and down and it levels the beat out and levels the tank it carries some beat to the back of the tank and some to the front of the tank to level it out and it holds 20 tons plus in the tank and this is in the cab big computer screen there to operate everything and that's the view down and then that's got auto steer so those when it drops down those feelers there drop down the row of the beat and that's what steers it as well normally they only have one traction trailer on but there have been two because it's a bit wet and have been having to go a lot slower with the trailers and travel further to the heap so they always just follow it with two sometimes this time of year at the end of the season So just looking at the edge of the field here, really pleased that it hasn't made a mess of it. Come through here with the solo and it will soon sort that out. That's the machine you saw a few minutes ago, parked on the edge of the stubble field. Yeah, looking at this. Beauty of this soil type. There doesn't look quite as much beat there as we had on the last time. There was 30 loads there last time. There doesn't look quite as much as that this time. needs just cleaning up before we put this through the beat cleaner. I don't want this soil going through and around the edge of the pad here just to scrape off. Looking at the beat you can see violet root rot still there and there. Stunts the plant and this happens when you grow beet or it's a soil borne disease and they say it's because you grow beet in too close a rotation but we beet, grow beet up here one year in four and we just seem to and yet we grow beet on the heavier land one year in four we get violet root rot up here on this light sandy soil but we don't on the heavy clay soils anyway uh this will be in the factory by the weekend cleaner already in place this is on the new concrete we put down so really good here so pleased we did this. So we've just got the sides off the trailer, just lifting this bucket off. And you can just see the beam peak across the fields there. Hydraulic locking pins make it useful. So yeah. And these are the sleeves, you can see they're falling down here. This is the wall we're gonna do this next summer. because so we've got sugar beet uh, coming, uh, gonna be in that field, just in the side of those trees. So it'll be stored in the yard. And this is where the first field will lift and we'll do this um, probably end of October, early November, and it'll come in this yard. So we need to redo all that wall. So we're gonna do it with concrete panel. So that's it for this midweek update. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on Sunday.